Entra ID. It's the cloud identity provider that your organization is probably using for you to log in and interact with your online Microsoft account. So you can access SharePoint, Microsoft Teams, OneDrive, Outlook, your email, your calendar, everything. But it's not without some security gaps and some that are present by default. So just recently at the B-Sides Nova Information Security Conference, B-Sides Northern Virginia, I got to catch up with a good friend of mine, Sean Metcalf. And Sean is a genius at all things Microsoft, specifically Active Directory and Azure Active Directory, now called Entra ID. These days, he's the Identity Security Architect at TrustedSec, Microsoft Certified Master in Active Directory, which sounds pretty badass, and former Microsoft MVP. And he maintains a blog at adsecurity.org. And we've showcased this before in other videos, but his blog here is a phenomenal resource for anyone that might be up to anything in Entra ID or Active Directory. He puts out a ton of sweet information for free, so honestly, this whole video is just based off of his work. My kudos, credit, credit where credit is due. Big thanks to Sean. I did ask permission. Hey, can I use some of the stuff from your recent talk at Besides Nova? Because he gave a talk titled How to Improve Entra ID Security Quickly. Like, what are the toggles and switches? settings and configurations that could harden and improve your security posture so you don't get hacked. The craziest thing is a lot of these are default settings that need to be changed. And folks just don't know or realize it, so I wanted to shine a spotlight on this resource so you could get a little bit smarter and secure your Entra ID environment. Like, did you know that any user, users by default, are able to register applications and create whole new tenants by default. Now, I'm not gonna go through each and every individual thing included in that blog post and included in Sean's talk, but he has been generous enough to share the slides. So of course, I'll leave a link for those in the video description if you're interested, but they even give you the quick links to be able to go make the changes and switch things up and correct this. Sean has all the sweet context of what's what and a little bit more background information on all of this. But when you're getting to the brass tacks, when you're getting to the super tactical stuff, even just the tip of the iceberg, what users can do, what guests can do. Too many people don't realize this, but Entra ID guests have the same view rights, like read capability as regular users, and guests can invite other guests. Anyway, the slides include some sweet links, so we could honestly just go click to get in and edit these changes. So just for demonstration's sake, I am gonna walk through a couple of these in my own Entra ID tenant. I have one of the old school, like free developer tenants that unfortunately I don't think Microsoft does anymore. Oh, I gotta do multi-factor authentication. Let me log in, super sorry. But with that, you should probably, in fact, always have some multi-factor authentication. Ideally, FIDO2. Using a security key is ultimately what we're hoping for. But look at this, I'm logged in and just the default setting, this is a flat vanilla instance of a Microsoft Entra ID tenant. Users can register applications. No, don't want that. Restrict non-admin users from creating tenants. Yeah, they probably shouldn't be able to do that. Users can create security groups? No, we should make sure that is set to no. I wanna walk through a couple more of these nasty default configurations, but I think it's still super important to know how these could be abused, how they could be exploited and taken advantage of. If you're doing some security testing or red teaming, you gotta have some of that training. So real quick, I did wanna let you know, Altered Security is doing their awesome Black Friday deal. It's 20% off all of their courses and boot camps. Boot camps in Q1 and Q2 of next year 2026 and 5% off when you're purchasing two or more items. They're even hosting an awesome event, AltSecCon 2025, three-day in-person red team training with tons of industry-leading on-premise and Azure cloud like Entra ID content. 10% off to be able to jump into that event and no coupon code is required. It's all just by default when you go check out the website. That Black Friday deal is running from now till December 17th, so I hope you jump in. If you aren't already familiar with Altered Security and the awesome stuff that they're up to, they have phenomenal training labs, resources, education, courses, even certifications to get smart in Active Directory, Azure Active Directory, your Entra ID, stuff in the cloud, stuff on-prem, CRTP, Active Directory certificate services, advanced stuff, evasion labs, and of course, the cloud material that I think is really, really necessary in today's day and age, and all of the awesome stuff, even on the Linux side of the house. Check out the boot camps, check out their in-person training. They just have a ton of sweet stuff. I'll link below.
below in the video description. I hope you snag some of the Black Friday deals. Huge thanks to Altered Security for all their support with this video and their continued support of the channel. Keep letting us do what we do. Thank you so much. So back to our security hardening little checklist here. What else do we got? User device setting defaults. Users have the default ability to enter join devices without requiring multi-factor authentication. Before we tweak that, I think there is one more still in the users page for the guest defaults. Because more often than not, you could just have a totally rogue guest that still has access to your tenant and can listen in and view and read and see all the things going on inside your cloud identity provider here. Guest users have the same ability to view Entra ID resources as regular users. That should be toggled down to the very bottom. Guest user access is restricted to properties and memberships of their own directory objects. When you can make that the most restricted, like limit the, what's the right term there? Like principle of least privilege, access control, attack surface. Like you don't want to let guests be able to do that. In my own tenant, apparently that was just guest users have limited access to properties, but I do want that to be restricted. And then we could scroll through here in case you haven't done this before. It's worth taking a look. What else could you limit? Like LinkedIn accounts allow users to connect with their LinkedIn? No. And I click save and that's that. Down below on this user settings page though, they do have a section for us to manage external collaboration settings and those are your guests. This one is super important too, because again, I think it's something that people just don't even realize. The guest invite settings by default Anyone in the organization can invite guest users, including guests and non-admins. So employee Joe Schmo, Rachel in marketing can just invite whoever they want. You can limit this down to like your own risk assessment and threat model. You could turn it all the way up. No one in the organization can invite guest users, including admins being the most restrictive, maybe only users assigned to specific admin roles. Again, Sean Metcalf slides cover this and I really wanna keep pointing back to this. That is the resource that I want you to take away from this thing. The defaults are all of this, but we could really toggle that down to, yeah, okay, only users assigned. I'm glad I got the call right for that. Collaboration resources, collaboration restrictions could be pretty locked down too. Is that at the bottom here? Yeah, collaboration restrictions. Make that hardened, please. I can just type in the domain or tenant that we use currently here, and then we can save this page. Good enough. Secure, at least better than we were. Can't boil the ocean, gotta chip away one at a time here. The defaults for device setting security though, we should also tweak and tune. Remember by default, that was any user could join whatever device they want to Microsoft Entra and it did not require multi-factor authentication, which we should have. So the device settings here, again, the slide includes the quick and easy link. We can specify some members here. I can just go ahead and add my administrator. I actually wanna add only the administrator user, not the group. That's just the name that I had set up for it. It is the global administrator role, but that's the name that I set for them. I don't want it to be too confusing when that's displayed maybe in other later screens. I'm gonna toggle this to no, don't register devices. And I will require multi-factor authentication at a minimum, though realistically, we should probably set up a a conditional access policy. We'll get to mention conditional access policy super duper soon, but I don't really wanna fall down that rabbit hole because my goodness, there is a lot to talk about. Let me click save on that. Now, obviously there's a lot more we could tweak and tune and change the settings for any of the configurations if we were to really go through one by one, like with a fine tooth comb to see how we could limit the attack surface and lock down our environment. Again, I just wanted to give you these resources, wanted to shine a spotlight on this because I don't know how many of you have even done that. Have you ever particularly audited your security posture in your Entra ID environment? Here, we're moving into a section that I have another video on, like the illicit consent grant attack, and a lot of the altered security training covers some of this stuff. When users are presented with an app or application that they could install into the Entra ID environment or connect and log in kind of with it, that basically gives a couple permissions that whatever the app wants, and at one point, any user could just like willy nilly accept and approve and allow consent for all of those permissions and privileges for any app across the entire org. Now I think that's been a little bit tightened up. You can see the defaults here are now a little bit more managed, but we could tighten that even further. Again, link here, super convenient. Let Microsoft manage your consent settings. Good, let's keep that how it is. 
reviewing Sean's blog post, I guess that original configuration where, again, anyone could do anything, allowing consent for any app, uh, that I think has changed and it no longer looks like this. However, it might in some environments. So again, worth checking in. Oh, then we fall down the rabbit hole for the rolls. Holy crap. There are 117 Entra ID rolls as of October 2025. That makes it really tough to know what's what. In fact, this whole image, I think, is intentionally and purposefully useless because it's just how over it's so overwhelming how many that there are. Now, there are 28 of them, according to Sean, again, all his work, 28 roles marked as privileged. Those are the important roles. Those are the ones that should be protected, but it has a little bit of nuance. Like something called global reader isn't the same as global administrator, and it doesn't really need the same level of protection for those kinds of accounts. Like obviously global administrator should have much higher scrutiny, much higher security than global reader, but all of these are ones that you should probably track and make sense of given 28 is a heck of a lot better than 117. Good insight, good knowledge here though. The ones that are in bold, kind of tough to see, but application administrator, cloud application administrator, directory writers, global admin, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Those are marked as privilege and should be a higher priority for protection, without a doubt. What they call tier zero roles though, are the ones that are the highest level of concern. Like these are the absolute keys of the kingdom. That's the crown jewel. Obviously, global administrator. Members or users with these roles should always have multi-factor authentication on. Big shout out Fido2 and more sweet slides from Sean in other presentations that he's given. Dude, he's everywhere. This is phenomenal. <laughs> we got to get Sean in a video and see if he could school me and teach me a lot of this uh, Entra ID stuff because I got a lot to learn. So obviously global administrator is now like the cloud and online equivalent to the domain administrator. Like we might be used to in kind of traditional oh, endpoint, classic pen test, network pen testing stuff, right? In the identity space in cloud, that's the global administrator, but there are a couple others that we should even honestly be tracking. Stuff like hybrid identity administrator. Don't know if you've seen that one before. Partner tier two support. Oh, that can reset passwords willy nilly. Like that could be used as a privilege escalation vector. Like any individual pr principal could promote themselves because they could adjust kind of the permissions it looks like. Same with privilege authentication administrator. <laughs> So much so that Microsoft says, do not use, do not use this. <laughs> and there's privileged role administrator. Users with this role can manage role assignments in Entra ID, as well as Microsoft Entra privilege identity management. That role grants the ability to manage assignments for all of Microsoft Entra roles, including the global admin role. <laughs> yeah, wow. Okay, these are things that we should kind of at least be aware of, right? He rolls through the same sort of methodology with making sure there are no standard user accounts that are in these highly privileged roles, walking through each of these and trying to be able to look for each of the different assignments, making sure they're using multi-factor authentication. And then he covers a heck of a lot more stuff like role assigned groups, what a lot of these privileges really are and what they look like. And this is kind of the schema and format. And you've probably seen this before, right? Maybe in other videos, even evil jinx stuff that we've covered or the illicit consent grant attack. Oh, mail.readwrite or user.readwrite.all. So you have an object to start, dot access, and then dot constraint. Those are worth tracking, but there are a lot of them once again. But if we drill down to the tier zero concerns as to what those permissions might be, obviously read, write all gives basically admin privileges. Looks like there's more damage that could be done with app role assignment. Same thing with role management. And that's uh, dot read, write dot all. And this is dot read, write dot directory. So again, trying to figure out the constraint or what the access level is, is important. Thankfully, that's just in the name, but these are the other big ones that we wanna be tracking. Thankfully, only four, at least the ones that we could see be immediately jump shotting to whole full power in the cloud ID tenant.
Conditional access policies, that's going to be a whole nother video on its own. Once I get smart on it, for one thing, and I know there is just so much to talk about. But the craziest, coolest thing with conditional access policy and why you absolutely should be using some of that if you aren't already handling some, I think, uh, intra ID initial access conversations. You get to define and declare, okay, based off of what geographic locations, device information or authentication method, and actually ensuring, requiring that they're using multi-factor authentication, et cetera, et cetera. There are a ton of potential mishaps with your conditional access policy. So he covers a lot of these. Shout out to Sean. Uh, again, link in the video description. Ooh, a big one though is EntraConnect. So EntraConnect is the way that you bridge to Together, your on-premise Active Directory environment to your cloud online Entra ID or old Active Directory environment, right? Azure Active Directory. Now new name, Entra ID. Sorry, I got to keep saying that over and over again. I drill it through my own head. But hackers could jump from that local on-premise environment to the online environment and vice versa if they could track down, oh, the opportunities to get in there. We've had a lot of those conversations with Bloodhound and trying to see, oh, how could we take on these different attack paths? But uh, we're getting a little bit too far in the weeds here. When Sean wraps this up, he does make this super sweet securing Entra ID quickly checklist. So this is the crash course on just a couple of things that we got to play with, like setting users to not be able to register applications, not letting them create tenants, and a lot of other sweet bullet points that I do wanna leave behind for you as an exercise for the reader. But I hope this was still some sweet exposure. I hope this was still some good information and awareness as to what the defaults look like in Entra ID and how they do need you to tend to them, to tweak them, to make sure you can actually bolster, set up, harden, and lock down your Entra ID cloud environment. With that, I'm done rambling. Thanks for watching this video. Hey, I hope you go take a look at some of the sweet new Black Friday deals that Altered Security is up to. Again, link below in the video description. I think you'll find some really sweet stuff that you're interested in, whether it's Active Directory hacking, Azure Active Directory, Entra ID, Cloud Online stuff now, and whether you're on whichever side of the fence, red team, blue team, purple team, I don't know, any color wheel cybersecurity that we want. Uh, I hope you know a little bit of how to defend these things too. That's why having this, you know what, run through of the settings, security things we can harden, configure to make security better. I hope that's still good info for you and more resources for you all to learn from. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video.